do you gots to be a Christian of the mature variety Mm -hmm. to get out there and spread the gospel? Ladies and gentlemen, dogs and fleas, pull up a chair, sit on your knees, for we have a story to tell you we are still learning about. Welcome to Talk the Walk. The name of this guy in this chair is Henry Moses. And the one over here is Gabriel Moses. We are super happy to be here, and thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Amen. We appreciate that. We do appreciate it. Gabriel, how was your week? It's good. It's It's good. good. Interesting. Interesting at my work. Interesting at home. Things that uh, things that have happened have been different. I've changed my pace at work, and uh, I've changed my pace at home. I've changed my pace in in the things I kind of want to do. So it's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, like I had a thing hit me where I realized I wanted to be a little more specific about everything. <coughs> and so, bless you. And so, uh, are you meeting me or are you? So I decided that I wanted to do rental properties, get into that. I've never done it before. I'm going to go for it. And then uh, the smoking, right? <coughs> bless you. Why are you saying bless you? Because it's funny to say bless you when That's someone coughs. Weird. Proceed with what you were saying. <laughs> no, I, I do. A lot of stuff has kind of been different these weeks. I'm, I feel like I'm right on the cusp of no more smoking. I've cut it down to probably 20, 10, 20% of what I've been smoking mm-hmm. on these stupid black and white awesome. cigars. I know. And I'm, it's awesome. I feel like That's I'm one of the hardest things in the world. Real estate's cool, but. Oh, yeah. Man, when well, we're gonna get down to it, hopefully I mean, the, cool. the smoking stuff. I know your, I know That's your, big. I know your wifey wife has been all about you. Oh yeah, getting off that. And, oh yeah, and uh, it's such a hard thing. You know, I did it for twenty seven years, and I don't even know if I've talked about that on there. But yeah, between smoking yeah. and vaping, I'm a twenty seven year veteran, and uh, yeah, that's nothing to be proud of. No, it's not, and it's gripping. It's, and I, it's hard, man. I see. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I saw a TikTok with Donald Trump where he was talking to his son or something. Uh, what's his Baron? Baron, and he says the same thing, or he said the same thing when the the guy was a little guy. Every day he goes, "I expect all A's," and I, and and also no drinking, no smoking, no drugs. And apparently he says it every day to his son. He said mm-hmm. it. And then he, on the one I saw, he goes, and let's add no tattoos, no tattoos. <laughs> and it's true. The wisdom of that is don't, <coughs> don't start this nonsense. It will grip you. It will ruin parts of your life that you should, that should not have been ruined. Don't drink, no drugs. Oh yeah. No alcohol. No, it's a bad deal. Or no, no smoking. It's a bad deal. And you're young. You think you just feel like you're ten feet tall and bull ten feet tall and bulletproof. Bulletproof. Yep. Yep. And uh I mean I but remember when I started. Uh, oh you always think you got more time, you always think you got this and that. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, you're getting sick and you're dealing with yeah. this and you're dealing with that, your body's changing. You're not you can't breathe the same. The same. You can't, can't sleep the same. You can't run the same. Yeah, it's a bad deal. It's bad all the way around. But it's hard to quit. I've been quit for a little over three and a half, or right about three and a half years. And you're my hero in that. Yeah. So is Jenny. But I don't know how many times I had to quote unquote quit <laughs> before I it, I it actually held. You know, I yes. finally got mad. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was vaping. And I, I, to, to be clear, if I could be, if I could find a way to do it in a healthy manner, oh yeah, I'd be doing it while we're doing this podcast. So would as I. long as it wasn't harmful to the body. Yep. Like okay, so I stink. So what? <laughs> Man, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, loved it. But it's a bad deal. It's a bad thing. We're it, supposed to be, you know, caretakers of this body that yes. the Lord's blessed us with, and that is certainly not doing it. No. And uh, and so a man, brother, you know, you know the story. I do the choke slam. You always talk oh, about the choke slam. I mean, straight up WWE. 
I, I, I'm sitting in my bedroom one night. It's about 11 o'clock. Back then, I used to go to bed about 2. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm puffing on my vape, happy as a camper. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, it stops working. Little and that, that induces device. panic. I don't have a backup. Smart guy would have had a backup, but I didn't have a backup. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I'm like doing everything I can to get this thing to work, and it won't work. Uh-huh. And so I, the the fear and panic that sprouts up inside me, you can't go somewhere at 11 at night to get one. It's so ridiculous. Oh, it's pathetic. It's so ridiculous. It's just, it just infuriated me, the fact that it had, had a, a grip hole. on me that yep. bad. Yep. And, um, and so I thought, this is bull. How have I let this happen? Yes. And so I just decided then and there, this is it. I am done. And uh, so I, I'm like, I better go to bed right now. I need to sleep. I need to not think about it. So I went to sleep. <clears throat> and I got up the next morning and went to work, working it, you know, where, was where, the where, where we are now. Yeah, I'm getting to it. Oh, I thought that already happened. Okay. Yeah. So no, no. So I go to work and I make it through the day and our job can be fairly stressful and hmm. And so I'm sitting there, I'm working, and and it's by about noon. I'm like, Ooh, I'm thinking about really it. Really hard. I'm thinking about it. And so I, I so I, I'm like, okay, I got, I've got everything done. I absolutely had to, and I was like, I'm out of here. So I drove home, and I walked in the house, and that thing was still laying on my nightstand, and I grabbed that stupid vapor. Went outside to my driveway and straight up WWE choke slam the daylights out of it. <laughs> and that thing just hit the concrete and exploded and went every direction all the way across because I threw it with such anger. Oh yeah. Just to make it was just to make a statement in my mind, you and me, we're done. Yeah. Yep. In the words of James T. Kirk, I have had Enough, Enough of, of you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, man. I had had enough. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, it was a mental statement for me. Like, yeah, you don't get to own me anymore. I still, you know, I still pay some consequences for having done that all yeah. this time. But and that's, you know. Better, better now than Never. I'll tell and you what I always think because about. you're shortening the heck of your life. So I'm pr- proud of you to be. I know how hard it is. Yeah. And you've got your own system. Yeah. Which man, talk about it. But but tell me what you're going to say. But then talk about your little system because I like it. I'll tell you the 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 little movie that I always think about is um, Frequency with yeah. Dan- Dennis Quaid. Oh yeah, and Jim yeah. Beazle. And Excellent movie. They're sitting there talking on radio waves from the past to the future, or the future to the back to the past, and so on, back and forth. And uh, the the son ends up telling the dad. The dad's like, "Hey, well, where am I? What am I doing?" He goes, "Dad, you didn't make it. You know." He's like, "You're not. You're not here anymore." He goes, "I'm not there. Why not? You know? What would? Why would I not be there?" Yeah. He goes, "That uh, you know, that smoking." Yeah. You know, it got you. You you got cancer, and it got you. Gotta you. quit. And yeah. the dad's like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah." And that know. would always make me so uncomfortable. Oh if you yeah, because I was a smoker during that time. Ah, oh, dad, I'm smoking. I was like, oh, it's gonna get me like a yeah. Dennis Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> and I I do I think I think about my kids, and I'm like, man, am I gonna cut their time short with me? Like dad cut mm-hmm. his time short with us. By not taking care of my body yeah. and not trying to do a better job, yeah, and it's it'll hit you in the heart, boy. You're like, I can't do this. I got to do better. I really, really can do this. So at this point, I I, I take these black and mild cigars and I cut them down to about an inch long, mm-hmm. and I throw away all the rest of it, and I get that little bit to <clears> smoke <throat> every couple of hours, and uh, that man, it's that and I have a patch that I put on that helps with nicotine, gives you nicotine. This is also embarrassing, but you know, whatever. I'm like, I could do what I got to do. To That's what we do. We'd be real on this show. So this could be helpful to other people. It's good that you're sharing that. It's I'm, I'm pretty proud. I feel like I'm maybe there. I mean, like 
Maybe I just smoked my last little bit on the way over here. Just get angry with it. Well, I love the choke slam that you said. Oh, yeah. That hit me a few weeks ago. I thought about it, and I'm like, choke slam. Yeah. <laughs> you piece of junk. I mean, it just. Yes, I hate you. Yeah. I am, I am angry. I am. You're done and owning me. I mean, it was. For me, it was. a. It dictates I, your life a bit. Yeah, it owns you. I mean, there was a time in, when you couldn't go through a meal. Yeah. We'd go out to eat, and you'd have to get up halfway through the meal to go out and get you a cigarette. Oh, yeah. Ticked people off. Yeah. I was like, who cares? we got to wait 50 hours for our food to come out. I'm going to go smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but you would actually be, we'd be eating. Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, I'm going to go get a smoke. Yeah, <laughs> you come back and finish your food. <laughs> yes. I was like, wow. I've had moments where I woke up in the middle of the night just to do it. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Because, I mean, I was a smoker du jour. And nah. I'm the type of personality that kind of indulges in whatever it loves. Yeah. Like this podcast. Yeah. This podcast I love. Yeah. This I podcast's way better for you. Yeah, you ain't lying. Way better for you than the than the smoky smoke. But man, I love the I love the snips, snipping it down. Yeah. You know, just uh, I I really do think that could be a thing. Just these little bitty <laughs> little bitty snipes to help people yeah, quit. Little snipes. Mm-hmm. Go you know, get your little bitty puff, boom, lay it down. I mean, that really does. It really does help you feel better, even just getting that little bitty puff. That you don't have to have the whole thing. It doesn't and take just a Just walk lot. away from it. Just, you know. But I used to indulge the whole cigar. You know, that's, I mean. <sighs> and yeah. That's bad. You're puffing uh, on those big yeah. old things and yeah. inhaling on them. I mean, that's. They're way harder than a cigarette. Yeah. Well, what you got on your verse? Or shall I go first? Why, my man, shoot, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I got a little First Peter 5, 8, and 9. Okay. That's one that everybody's probably going to recognize. You always go over the one verse. This is one verse. Because it's make a make whole thought. Bad. It's one thought. It's making me look bad. It's one thought. Okay. So, for God so loved the world that he gave... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not First Peter. That's not First Peter. First Peter five eight and nine. Be sober minded. Be vigilant, or be watchful, for your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, yeah. seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Yeah, I keep getting them mixed up. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing. That the same type of suffering is being experienced by your brotherhood around the world. That's great. I feel like that thing is, I feel like that scripture is just, I mean, you almost, you almost have to spend some time unpacking it. But I mean, it starts out first, be sober minded, which man, there's this almost a pandemic. We've just gone through our pandemic there's really a pandemic around the world, certainly in the U.S., where Christians feel like it's okay to be drunk. I, mean, I'm, I don't care. I don't you like can Call that. me whatever. You can call me judgmental. I'm just yeah. going to tell you right now. Drunk is wrong. Drunk is wrong. I don't know how else to say yeah. that. Drunk it's is all wrong. right to have a drink. I mean, if you want to, fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with No, I don't think drink. so either. But running around drunk. Drunk is something else. And look, buzzed is drunk. It's a level of drunk. That's just the way it is. You know, if it accidentally happens, whatever. But man, there's a lot of Christians that just man, I'm, I'm gonna get my hug on with a drunk. Henry, let's just let's just cut to the chase. Can you imagine Jesus being drunk? No, absolutely not. All right, settled that. Having a drink? Yeah, sure. Yep. Being drunk? No. Yep. And 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 why? Because it says you can't be you, the the why is you can't be watchful. You're not watchful yeah. when you're drunk. Yeah. This scripture right here says, "Be sober minded, be watchful." Yeah. You know, you don't ever hear of somebody that's a night watchman standing post at a tower, you know. (laughs) Drunk. When I I used to work, you know, kind of federal security type job, I promise you when I was put into into patrol positions, if I'd have been caught drunk, non-sober minded, non-watchful, what do you think would have happened to me? At the very least, fired. At the very least, fired. I wonder what kind of charges might be. Oh, I mean, yeah. 
But it could be bad news bears dealing with FBI, all that yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. Um, be watchful. But the reason why then, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I mean, this dude is legit. And, and I think we forget about it. Like, it's good that we've gotten onto the focus of... I need, you know, I need to guard against myself. That's good. But let us not forget that Satan is literally, according to 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And I love the the connection or the the analogy or metaphor, whatever it is, that that, that idea of the lion, because, of course, it's super powerful the king of the jungle and all that but it's also if you've ever seen document documentation or documentaries where the lion they're recording him creeping up on some poor little deer or antelope or whatever Mm -hmm. dang right man you talk about he is focused it's freaky locked in and all his power is waiting for that moment to pounce to launch and odds are He's going to get you. Yeah, he's hiding in the weeds. I mean, he's hiding. You all, you always those see the reeds. lion. He's hiding in those, whatever. those the brown reeds, whatever yeah, yeah. those things are. Lion King. I mean, he's blended <laughs> in. You don't see him coming. That's why you, That's why it says to be watchful. And the eyes are sharp, man. Yeah. The eyes, ooh, creepy. Yeah. Creepy. I mean, if you're not watchful, you're going to get got. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And you can't do it if you're not sober-minded. If you're not watchful, if you're not vigilant. Um, But I love how it says then resist him firm in your faith. Firm in your faith. Faith. And I have to wonder how many times I've gone through life not firm in my faith. A lot, probably. And I would say those are the worst times of my life. Stay close to God. Yeah. Stay close. Yeah. If you do not... I mean, you're running away from security. And you think of this. You get, I, I think of that that prowling lion. How many times do you see, they'll come up to, it, let's say, a herd of caribou, right? Mm-hmm. Man, if he comes up to that herd, yeah, trying not, to pick not one so, out, not and that, you, you can go jump on the YouTube machine and, and you can see. Yeah. You can watch videos where the whole herd turned on that lion. And that yeah, lion... Yeah. Ends up running away, tell the heck out of there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. herd trying baby. to get me out of here. Stat, stay with the herd. I'm in trouble here. Yeah, stay with your brothers and sisters. Yeah, you know, if we're not getting in the fellowship, if we're not getting built up in our faith, you know, spending time in the scripture. I know we drill it. You know, even mm-hmm. Jared and I, whenever we did this, the original version of this podcast, we drilled it then. And then you and I drill it now. I mean, yep. we can't say enough. Man, you got to be in the word. I really think, I really think, Gabe, like I'm taking, I'm taking piano lessons right now. Um, and if I don't practice it. every day, I'm not going to get better. And there's times I go for a week or two without doing it at times. And I'm like, I, you know, you get back on, guess what? It's gone nowhere. It hadn't increased. Your skill level mm-hmm. hadn't increased. Your, your this and that. Um, and, and so, kind of, kind of the same type of thing, man. If you're not in your Bible consistently, uh-huh. your faith is not going not to there. to be firm. Firm in your faith, right? And then I'll finish up the the last part of that scripture. Like I said, there was so much to unpack, but but knowing uh, that the same types of suffering are going on throughout the world with your brothers and sisters. Oh, that's right? the cool part. One of the, that's another cool thing. Yeah, so cool. I mean, I can't help but think misery loves company. Oh, okay, I'm not the only one. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, you know, it's Satan, it's, uh, Satan is Satan. Yeah, no question. There's no special Christians out there. Yeah, and we're all being attacked. I mean, you you have to understand it's not just you. It ain't just you. Whatever it is that we're going through, it's not just you. It's okay. It's what's going to happen in this life. And yeah. It's all right. Be okay with that. Yeah. Hit me. I've got Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 4. And it says, The heart of the wise is in the house of the morning. 
and uh, and the sad the heart but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure and i i love that because it it's, so, so, sorry repeat the that. heart of the wise is in the house of the mourning or the sad okay and the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure pleasure all right roll with that well, first, what I'd say is, I'm quoting the Bible, so it's yeah. true. I agree, but so see, this is why I. Look this at is the what I love about it. it. Like, and yeah. no, uh, no, the scripture around won't help a whole lot in this case because I read it a yeah. little bit. The next verse is a little, but basically, it's saying the same thing. <clears throat> it's that's the fun part about the Bible. I just spoke 100 percent unadulterated truth. I quoted the Bible, and so the fun part about that is you can trust that. Now, then, of course, comes the human side where we try to interpret what we think it means. And probably will be pretty close, but it's not the same as quoting the unadulterated truth of the word. So I am always stand on that. And it should make our eyebrows go up a little bit. What's wrong with a little bit of pleasure? Huh? What's wrong with that? Well, that's not that's not what it does for me. I'm I'm more how is it wise to be said? No, it said the heart. Mm-hmm. Of the wise is mm-hmm. in the house of the morning. So, oh, okay. It's saying, so rather than rather than spending, it's not time, saying run around being r- sad. R- it's saying rather than spending time, pour into party people and who are sad. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, Your heart I'm should go yeah, toward someone yeah. who is hurting <clears throat> and the lost. For sure, your that's where your time yeah. would be best spent here yeah. on this earth is pouring into people who hurt. Yep. You see someone hurting, you should do something about it. You should offer your time, yep. offer your counsel, offer Jesus yep. right there. Someone's hurting. That's because something went wrong. Mm-hmm. And then it says, of course, the heart of the fool is in the house of pleasure. Ooh, that one's, I'm like, I seek pleasure. Of course, I seek it by smoking. Mm. That doesn't belong. Kind of reminds you of that Pinocchio, like we we're you and I were talking about last night. Mm-hmm. The that's what it kind of makes me think of the house of pleasure. The, you know, those the, boys playing the boys pool, going smoking. Turn, yeah, yeah, turning into donkeys. Turning into donkeys. donkeys. I'm gonna watch that. Oh man, I, I mean, seen it that's a kid, but that's that's what that reminds of me of. But then I think of I do think of yeah, in the house of the sad, like the man, you, you're gonna have to be humble. Uh, you're going to have to be secure in, in who God's created you to be mm-hmm. to, to get in there and walk into them, take the time to walk into the house of the sad and sit with them and love on them. And, you know, it's a very selfless mm-hmm. act. One seems to be more self-focused than the other. Uh, the, uh, 100%. Yeah. And who did Jesus? Yeah. He wasn't going around hanging out, hanging out with the people who were just fine. Yeah. He was seeking out the ones that were not just fine. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to be laying on that deathbed. And you can, I mean, yeah, I I believe you can make it to heaven without having gotten out and done much ministry. Yeah. But where are you going to be at? Where are you going to, what are you going to be thinking when you're laying there on the bed? Like, man, those TV shows, that was a life well spent. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know? Right. You know, how are you going to spend your time? How, yeah. how are you spending it? And 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 I always know when we get to heaven, our eyes will be 100 percent open and we'll see with 100 percent clarity. And we will realize what a waste of time mm-hmm. things were that we chose to do. Yeah. And our, our heart, I got to know our heart would be sad for a moment. I know in heaven it's, you know, we're clear of all guilt and burdens, but. So you got to know that but, the, I mean, the recognition, just of what I, yeah, you I would say your awareness of, don't miss your opportunities yeah. here to, yeah. to love on somebody and to tell them the truth. If they're, burdened, yeah. if they're burdened by sin of whatever sort it is, tell them you are burdened by yeah. sin. Tell them that you're burdened by sin. Yeah, that's right. You're burdened by Satan. And Jesus has set you free if you'll accept it. Mm -hmm. You're Mm -hmm. burdened. That's That's why you're down. Well, Gabe, that sounds like a little bit of gospel there (laughs) you might be talking about. I've been accused of that. And it's perfect timing 
because I had a question for you. Mm. It's been a bit since we've opened things this way. I got a question for you. Okay. Do you got to be a Christian of the mature variety mm-hmm. to get out there and, sh- and spread the gospel? How mature? <laughs> Any mature. Any, Any mature. mature. Right. Brand I'm new. Spent time. I just mean, asked Jesus question into to, my heart. Yeah. yeah. Let's, the next let's say you're a rook. I'm a rook. You're a rookie out there. You're sitting on the bench. And Coach Christ says, hey, rookie. <laughs> hey, rookie. <laughs> get out there and spread that gospel. <sighs> and it's been a day. I'll tell you the I thing mean, about Does the Great Commission apply to rookies or does it just apply to quote unquote seasoned vets? What are we talking about? Here? I'll tell you the thing about a rookie. They're excited. They're excited. The the newborn Christian is excited. Yeah. And they're they're wanting to get on that field yeah. and they want to play. They want to yeah. play ball. Put me in the game, coach. But do they but do they know all the plays? I don't know. So here so here's the thing. Here, the I was kind of thinking about it. And, then, and absolutely not. I mean, absolutely not. Uh-huh. Um and it's funny because I, I think of a you know, I I've seen some some sports clips of of you know, I don't know if it's a rookie or not, but a football player getting an interception running the wrong direction <laughs> and his own football teammate having a tackle, tackle him. Because, yeah. yeah, he was running towards We love the, those. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's a bit of a rookie mistake, they call it. And um, uh, and boy just got turned around. That's a little embarrassing. But, but, uh, but I was thinking about it. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know in the... Aid the day and age we live in. It's very encouraged, man. Get out there, go through school, go through all this training. Um, whether you go to college, whether you go to um, a trade school, whatever the case may be, like oh, man, that's good. There's so much information out there. It's so encouraged that you put all this time and all this discipline in, and and then you go out, and then you do. Right. And that's not bad. That's not bad. But do we take that? Do we take that and apply it to our Christian walks? Do we get out there? You know, does the modern man get out there and say, well, I just got saved. Now I got to I have to go spend time studying this and that before I talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm not frowning upon studying. Mm -hmm. You should do that. We've talked about that. Right. We talked about that just a little bit ago. Um, but are, are, do you know, do you feel encouraged from the beginning to get out there and get after it? And I think this, I think get out there and get after it, but I also think have an understanding of what the gospel is. And guess what? I looked up a definition, but let's do this before. Goodness. Okay. What would you say your definition of the gospel is? I'd say it's the freedom from sin through Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd say it's an understanding of of what we've been been saved from that we can do nothing to earn it, nothing to deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. And that's it's by grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. Mm-hmm. Um, through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross and His blood that covers us and redeems us, sets us free. Through, through our undeserving selves. Yeah. And because of that, we're now seen by God through the blood of Christ as perfect, yeah. which we could never deserve. So, so you know, we're pretty much on the same page there. So let's see if, let's see if Wycliffe Bible encyclopedia got it right or not. Wycliffe. Does that line up with our definitions or not? Okay. And they say this. Wycliffe summarizes the gospel message this way. The central truth of the gospel is that God has provided a way of salvation for men through the gift of his son to the world. He suffered as a sacrifice for sin, overcame death, and now offers a share in his triumph to all who will accept it. 
The gospel is good news because it is a gift of God, not something that must be earned by penance or by self-improvement. Good job, Wycliffe. I think you got it. Boy, I th- think they nailed it. Yeah, put in some cool scriptures, John 3.16, Romans 5, 8 through 11, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19, and Titus 2, 11 through 14, if anybody, if you want to go take the time and go dig through some of that. Um, but I but I think, Gabe, boy, I mean, that that is gospel is described by Christians as good news. If you're a new Christian listening to this, it's described as good news. But I also think, Gabe, it's important to understand, according to uh, John 16, 8, it's not our responsibility to actually save anyone. John 16, 8 says, And when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So then what what ball would you say is in our court? As a new Christian, if the Holy Spirit's your convictor, job is to tell your testimony. Yeah. That's it's as simple as that. In the grand scheme of things, if you had a scale, uh, somebody who's the wisest, most Bible studied person on the planet and whoever existed, uh, you would stick him on a scale a mile long. He'd be in the first inch worth of st- best studied um, person people on the on the planet. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, that was a lot of blah blah blah. But he wouldn't have a clue what it all really, really comes down to. He'd have a clue. But he couldn't tell you the full meaning of it all or even come close. So what makes anybody special? What makes anybody have a more right to tell the gospel than anybody else? Now, if you're a Christian, if you've been saved, if you've asked Jesus into your heart and you've said, you are the Lord of my life and I'm going to follow you and I'm going to renounce all the things that are evil in my life and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn away from it and I'm going to do that no more. Then my opinion is you have the right to preach the gospel. Share the good news. Spread the gospel. Spread the good news. You get out there and let nothing hold you back. You want me to throw a scripture at you that backs up what you just said? Heck yeah. All right. I thought you'd like that. It's in Revelation, no less. Notice I said Revelation, not Revelations. Just Revelation. Indeed. It was the Revelation. Anyway, Revelation 12, 10, and 11. Now that I sound very intelligent by by bringing up that fact. that There's no S at the end of it. There's no S. Yeah, there's no S. Anyway, onward and upward. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying... Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. That just sounds just powerful right out the chute. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down. So it's talking about Satan being thrown down from heaven. Who accuses them day and night before our God. We know that Satan is the accuser of the brethren of us. And they have conquered him and they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The devil's, I mean, my scripture, and it wasn't planned that way, but it's talking about Satan walking around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Uh-huh. Um, and right here, it's talking about, woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil's come down to your earth in great wrath. Um, but how's he overcome? First, by the blood of the lamb, by the blood of Christ. Uh-huh. And after that, by the word of our testimony. So we have to, exp- we, you, that, you can get out there and explain because if you're coming to Christ, you've been, you've had it explained to you that you're covered by the blood of Christ, right? You have at least a brief understanding of that, and you have the word of your testimony. That testimony you lean on. What is your testimony? Understanding that you've been saved by grace. Understanding, having the understanding of how filthy we are. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And how much we've been saved from. That's our testimony. And sharing it. Sharing our experience. Sharing our 
our passion for Christ and our appreciation for Christ with others. If we go back and lean on that, we can conquer all these accusations. Yes, Satan's coming at us with these accusations. No, 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 no. Hold on. I remember what I've been saved from. I remember the horrible person that I was and am. And I've been rescued from all that. And then I'm going to use that and I'm going to share that with others and give them hope. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, anyway, I think there's the side of. So we're we're obviously proponents of a newborn Christian should go out and preach the gospel. And then there's the other side that goes, OK, you know. For lack of a better way to put this, mm -hmm. the devil's that let's play devil's advocate and say, well, wait. You know, if you don't have if you if you don't have some general idea of the word, you could tell people stuff as a representative of Christ that isn't true. Couldn't that be? Mm -hmm. So that's the scary side of it is you run around and say you're a Christian, but you you beat people with the with the bat or the hammer of judgment and no you not you, you haven't realized you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> The the non believer, you won't beat them with the bat of judgment. You're gonna you're gonna speak to them with the heart of love and conviction and truth to tell them. Okay. You this is what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And what you're what you're doing is a bondage and a cage for you to be in set up by Satan. He's got you in a cage. Right now you don't even know it. And Jesus has the key to let you out of that cage. Through freedom from sin and truth. You need truth. You don't have it. Rather than beating some some poor lost soul with a bat of judgment, bam. You know You're an idiot. I would I would think you do this wrong. Yeah. You're doing this. That's wrong. You're doing See, this. That's I would wrong. think that it's generally the more quote unquote mature that tend to be the the head beaters. That tend to beat people over the head. I think. I think. I think yeah, that's quote, one. Unquote, that's one of the sure. right. Right. No. No. Not right. I think it's more the the newness of what you've been rescued from uh, the rookies. That when they get out there, it's a more grace filled approach. And what you've been rescued by. Yeah. Exactly. What you've been rescued by. Right. It's a more grace. You're so excited about about having been rescued. You're like, guess what? Yeah. I have good news. I'm, they're not necessarily going to go and be like, "Hey, hey, uh, that, that that what you're doing there is wrong." That what you because they're so fresh from having been saved from all of it. They're just like, well, "Hey, you've never seen someone be excited to speak hatefully and judgingly on someone else." You know, usually they're kind of mean. Yeah. Someone who's judging is kind of mm -hmm. mean. A happy, mm -hmm. excited person, they don't go. Guess what? You're a freaking idiot. Aren't you excited about that? <laughs> They're going, guess what? I got saved. I got saved from sin. I got saved from hell. I got saved from Satan, and I get to now be with God. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. But you don't see them be excited saying, you're so stupid. You cheated on your wife. Isn't that exciting? You cheated on your husband. You did drugs. You killed that person. Isn't that exciting? They don't do that. They go, they're pretty pretty hard and mean about it. You're an abomination. What you did is disgusting. What you did is it's just wrong. You're wrong. What's wrong with you? That's a that's a mm -hmm. spirit of judgment. Mm -hmm. No spirit question. of freedom is not like that. Right. And I think the rookie. I think that's one of the beauty of one of the beauties of being a rookie is you you're you're just you're just going into it. Focused on the actual God. The gospel is the good news. True salvation is freedom. The gospel is the good news. Yeah. Not, I wouldn't call good news focusing on our sins. What's good news about that? I mean, if we're coming at it with somebody from the angle of you're doing this wrong, 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 you're doing this wrong. I mean, the list could go on forever. And by the way, they could flip that on us and do the same exact thing. Yeah. But if we're coming at it from the angle of 
I've got good news for you. Of what it is. Good news is whatever wrong you're doing, and that's between you and God, you know what that is. Or maybe you don't, but the Lord, the Holy Spirit, as we talked about a second ago, will be faithful to convict you in that. And then it's up to you what you want to do with that or not. But the good news is, the good news is that you can be saved from that, that you can be rescued from that, from this mire that you're in that I've been in. And this is how it's done. This This is what God, this is what God did for me. Let me tell you about it. And as rookies, what do rookies do? You're right. They screw up. They goof. Yeah. They go into, by the way, so do veterans. Just hopefully not as often. Yep. But rookies are definitely going to mess up. But man, you can't get better. You can't get better at your craft, better at what you're doing, better at what you're called to do if you're not out there doing it. And, and studying it. Doing it. I love that. It's yeah. both. Yeah. Go do it. And of course, then re- then come back to your yeah. to your sanctuary and study it some more. Then go do it some more. Then come back and study it some more. Then go do it. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Does a junior varsity football player have the same playbook that an NFL quarterback has? I guess so. I don't know. Heck no. High school football. You know you. You're talking about dumb down, only a certain amount of plays, this and that. Like they're, they're trying to get it all down. <laughs> I'm like, I've never looked at either. Then you go to the NFL, and it's this complex playbook that you can't, okay. you know, you'll okay. get, you'll get, I mean, you better not get caught sharing that playbook with other teams and all. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's all this. High school's just, yeah, yeah. Remember on Remember the Titans. And they're talking about how simple his playbook is. It had like yep. his offensive playbook had like six plays or something yep. like that. And he was like, yeah, it'll work. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. But he was keeping it dumbed down. Yeah. You know, keep yep. things simple. Yep. Yeah, as you go on, fine. <clears throat> you know, the playbook will get better. It'll get, you know, you'll get better at understanding different plays and the complexities yeah. of them and, and the strategies of them. It doesn't start out that way, but it also doesn't mean you're not going to get out there and play. Yeah. Yo. You're going to play. Rookie. Get off that bench. Say what? Take, <laughs> you know, take, big take, eyes, a little bit scared. Position. Am I going to look like an idiot? All that's going down in your head. But so, still excited. But, yeah. I can't believe it. I'm in the game. I mean, if we're going to go there, let's talk about Rudy. All right. Everybody knows Rudy. Oh, I know it. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. So. His whole life, basically, his old, whole young adult life was spent sitting there trying to get to play on the Fighting Irish, play with the Fighting Irish Notre Dame. And, uh, like, at the end of the movie, they let him play, like, one or two snaps or something. And he goes out there and sacks the quarterback. <laughs> and it's victorious and it's I mean that one play he gets to do is like well, he was waiting ready it. ready ready to yeah. go do this just just anything yeah. he sat he finally gets on the squad uh, but is you know never called up to play on the field and at the end you know mm. he's so excited and he gets out there and sacks the quarterback mm. and the whole crowd goes wild because people know his story and his team was, of course, yeah. super happy because they know his story. Yeah, and it is the the person who's new to it all usually has a zest and a zeal that's unbelievable, and can I, can move mountains. Yeah, I think that's you know that's the cool thing because you're right in real life. I mean, we don't we you may never get called to get in the game. You may be a bench rider. There's career backups in the NFL, which that ain't a bad job to have. <laughs> You're taking less hits and still making really good money. That's all right. I remember when I was a kid, I thought, you know, if I could just be a third string player on an NFL team, that'd be all right. Yeah. I, don't do I get paid to sit there and watch the games. Okay. That's not really the way it works. Yeah, not Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah. That's the, right. Right. So. In, in reality, in, in the physical life, yeah, you may work your tail off and never get. But that's the cool thing about this: you are called into the game from the moment you accept 
Christ and accept his his sacrifice yeah. and salvation, you're in. Yeah. You're in right there on the spot. Well, um, it's crazy because you don't even know there is a game mm-hmm. sometimes until you get saved. Someone tells you there's a devil, there's a Jesus, mm-hmm. there's a Holy Spirit, there's mm-hmm. a Father God. And both sides want you on their team. But one of them is going to destroy you, and one of them is going to save you and free you from all this. Oh, yeah. And now you, now you're, so you come over to God's side, and now you're free to run. Yeah. And you realize there is a game. Yeah. And you get to participate. Oh, you're a participant. You're not on the bench. Mm-hmm. You're in there whether you want to be in there or not. You're on the field. That's what I love. Everybody's on the field. And I, I think the thing I on. think the thing to keep in mind, Gabe, you're right. Everybody's on it. <clears throat> I think the thing to keep in mind is it's not it's not you. Swinging back around to that, it's not you that's going to do it. Um, it's it, not you that's going to do that's what? Ga- that's going to lead people to Christ. It's not right. It's not. Therefore, your performance, yeah. how you do it, and if you say the perfect right words. Man, if people shuck you, because that is, that is this, I guess that's a scary thing. I mean, am I going to get out there and get rejected? Yeah, you know, are people going to want to listen to me? They either, they will they, or they won't. They'll either respond to the call of the Holy Spirit or they won't. But what is it that, that people are dying to hear? And it's a message of hope. It's a message of, is there escape from these hurts and pains? that I'm going through. Mm-hmm. Does anybody care? Is anybody willing to share with me a way out of this? Because man, imagine, imagine or remember back to when you were walking through that life. I can remember back to when I was walking through that life and the, the, the darkness that I was going through and surrounded by, even though I had loved ones that loved me, you guys, um, and were praying for me, Man, I, I felt like I was surrounded by demons all the time. Mm-hmm. To the point that at 23 years old, I wanted to be dead. Mm-hmm. At 23, you know, Sadie, my little girl, she's 21. And it's so funny. I, I thought I was so grown up back then. Uh, really, man, you're still a kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you're still a kid. I was ready to be dead. It was such darkness, such slime, such hopelessness. I couldn't, you know, bro, I couldn't find a way out. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember back to your time. If you admit, if you are a seasoned vet, remember back to when, to the beginning, to how you felt the miracle that it truly was. The feeling of being free. Yeah. When you thought it couldn't happen. Yeah. Share that. Share the word of that testimony. That's what people need to hear, a message of hope. Yeah. A message of freedom because, man, you're walking around. If you haven't experienced it, I'm happy for you. But I also just don't you believe that's true. If you haven't experienced, experienced hopelessness. Hopelessness. Yeah, right. Well, the feeling of just being lost. I think we all experience yeah. that. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think there's a way around that. I, that, that that's there's a there's a lot of stuff. That's the the fun about being a Christian who's been a long Christian is you you face off with a lot of different things. I asked Jesus into mm-hmm. my heart when I was seven mm-hmm. or six or eight. I don't know. You know, you're so young at that point, you don't know what age you are. Mm-hmm. So you always just pick a number and say, "I was seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a long time ago. Yeah, early on in my life. Yeah. And I have experienced so many hard, satanic things, Mm -hmm. attacks on my time and my life. And and God has actually used those to show me what he was doing, what he he wanted me to learn through those experiences. Mm -hmm. They happen. It's not, you know, did, did God do it? Did Satan do it? This is life on earth. Welcome to it. There's a lot of hard stuff that you're going to experience that we already have experienced, and the future is unknown. 
But God has always shown me yeah. how he used these experiences to grow me in him. And I have fallen in love with him because of who he is and mm-hmm. what he's given me. And what, what he's given me is answers. You talk about wanting to die. I was I was like 21 and I read the Da Vinci Code. And um, our grandpa recommended I read it, and so I did. Mm-hmm. And it shook my world, and it messed me up, and it confused the crud out of me. And um, I walked around... I, I I just I decided I didn't want to be on earth anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't have any plans on suicide or anything like that. But I just I said, all right, Lord, I can't stand this earth. I'm t i am I don't want to be confused. And I know you're still you, but I'm just confused. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be here. It's a disgusting place. I don't like it here. I'm gonna walk around this block, and it was probably one in the morning, two in the morning, I don't know. I'm gonna walk around my block in my neighborhood. And I want you to do, just do whatever you got to do to get me home. I don't. If a tree limb yeah. breaks and falls on me and crushes me to death, yeah. Or if a Been car, there. I car, get that. Yeah. car flies around the corner, yeah. Then and hits me, I won't even try to move. Just mm-hmm. let it come. Let it come. I want to go home where it's not like this. I want to go be with you in heaven. Mm-hmm. So I walked all the also way. at a young age. I mean, twenty one. Yeah. No, you're more susceptible because you're you're just. You haven't had a lot of victories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you you don't have a lot of testimony to lean on. That's right. Yeah. Uh, You are more susceptible. I will agree with Mm -hmm. that. So when you hear somebody older Mm -hmm. committing suicide. Yeah, that's the same same age as Sadie. But, mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just, man. That age, that age. So I did. I walked around the block, and I was waiting, dude. I was waiting on something strange to happen. Satellite fall out of space. Yeah. Some some thug yeah, come running trimmed. up and want my wallet. I'm like, go ahead, shoot me. <laughs> I'm ready for the bullet. <laughs> like old old boy on uh, nothing to lose. He, huh? When Martin Lawrence gets in the car oh, yeah, and tries yeah, to yeah, right. him, and he's like, boy, you just you got into the, the wrong, wrong car. car. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. ready. I'm like, ready cool. for anything. All right. Well, the cool part was I walked around that block, and. Man, as I started getting within two, three houses of my front door, um, I was I, was, I started to get a little excited because part of my deal was, okay, God, if you're, you know, I want I want to go home, but if you don't take me home, I expect some answers. Mm-hmm. I expect some answers. If you're going to leave me out here like this, I expect some answers. You're not going to take me home. Well, then I deserve some answers. I need them. Why would you leave me here with no answers? So that was my that was my call out to him. And, all right, because you were hopeless. If you decide to you were walking here, through hopeless. I was hopeless, yeah. and that was exactly right. And I was tired of being hopeless. I was mm-hmm. like, I need answers, mm-hmm. and I don't believe you're an evil god. I believe you are a good, good god, as the song says. So there's something going so on here. There's a give problem me here. An answer. I'm in trouble, and, and it just I'm in trouble. It's like you're in a swamp and you don't know where to go. Yeah, but somebody's sharing their testimony with you. In that moment, if somebody comes along when you're in that dark moment and shares their, hey, I've, guess what? I've got some good news. Because you're drowning. Man, well, when you're in those times, you're drowning. I'm not saying I was that's why. I saved at that time. But. But, 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 but right. But I'm talking about people that are unsaved going through those times like that, times of being unsaved or times of, of hopelessness because that's a period of hopelessness. Mm-hmm. And you had God. So think of how 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 somebody without him is exactly they're walking through going the through the same thing without that. And even if somebody would have came and shared their testimony with you in that moment, that would be encouraging. Like, man, there is hope because you're walking through a, a period of of just sludge. Yeah. Just sludge. Why am I even here? What's even? And that was you with Christ. You know, um, so imagine somebody without just that message of hope. It was neat when I got, uh, just to finish it, I did, when I made it around that Mm -hmm. and I got to my front door, Mm -hmm. it was, it was a neat thing because I knew I was going to get answers. I knew he would give me answers. Mm -hmm. And that's as a Christian, of course, as a, as a, a new born Christian and the idea of spreading the gospel. Yeah. You're new. You haven't. Walk through that mm-hmm. type of stuff sometimes with God. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, I, I, the idea of a newborn person, should they preach the gospel? Heck, yes, they should. Yeah. Does that mean, you know, as a, as a newborn? You, you might be saving experience. somebody's life. You, you might, might be, be saving, saving their spirit, life. their eternity. To refresh them. Give, a, give, a, give your Christian brother a refresher. Christ. And if they don't, they don't. If they don't accept the hope, that's between them and God. They don't have to. Mm-hmm. It's not on you. It's okay. It's not because you didn't say something right. It's not because you didn't handle the situation well. Even if you goofed, you can stink up the whole thing and just fumble all over your words. And the Holy Spirit can still take that and deliver the message to the person the way he wants to hear it and and have them help them to get on the right track. It's just not about our talent. It's not. It's just not about our skills. It's not, yes, try to develop it, try to get better. Fine, good. But open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and get out there. You just don't know. You just don't know when you're going to be saving someone's life. On that note, and before we wrap things up, I do want to say um, there is a, man, let's see. Man, we just run out of time. But the the what's called the Romans Road to Salvation, very helpful. Um, and I'm gonna we're, we'll post up a link on it on on our Facebook page um, from GotQuestions.org, which is a very handy tool. Um, but it the Romans Road to Sal- Salvation has numerous scriptures throughout the Book of Romans. That's why it's called the Romans Road to Salvation that help you explain the path to Christ and the need to Christ. So you can Google the Roman Romans road to salvation. Um, or again, we'll put a link on our Facebook page from got questions that, that kind of explains what the Romans road to salvation is and that. So that's a helpful little tool. And then Gabe, I'm going to do you a solid and let you read these words. Um, by set me free by casting crown or uh, of set me free by casting crowns. I'm gonna let you do it. I read the last one and I get choked up. You do it. You, you get choked up too. That's why I was letting you do it. Mm-hmm. No, I did it last time. <sighs> yep. Yep. Okay. <sighs> there it is. <sighs> Deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> and if you start to get choked, I told you before the show, you were up, gonna read it. If you start to get choked up, ah, read faster. I found yeah. it. Oh, if yeah. you read faster, you won't get choked up. I can do this. I can do this. Okay. It's called Set Me Free by Casting Crowns. Look up the song. We'll try to remember to post that as well. Oh, shoot. Just reading the first line is all right. Yep, yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. You spun that on me. Mm-hmm. We talked about it before the show. Yeah, nice. You didn't say that. Nice try. You just want okay. people to hear me cry. I do want that. I don't want to sound like a crybaby. It hasn't always been this way. I remember brighter days. Before the dark ones came, stole my mind, wrapped my soul in chains. Now I live among the dead, fighting voices in my head, hoping someone hears me crying in the night. Read fast. Read fast. And carries me away. Set me free of the chains holding me. Is anybody out there hearing me? Set me free. Morning breaks another day. Finds me crying in the rain. All alone with my demons I am. Who is this man that comes my way? The dark ones shriek. They scream his name. Is this the one they say will set the captives free? Jesus rescue me. Set me free of the chains holding me. Is anybody out there hearing me? Set me free. And as the God man passes by, he looks straight through my eyes. And darkness cannot hide. Do you want to be free? Lift your chains. I hold the key. All power on heaven and earth belong to me. Do you want to be free? Lift your chains. I hold the key. All power on earth, on uh, all power on heaven and earth, belong to me. You are free. Jesus set us free. That's what people hope for. Yeah, that is what people need to hear. And even as a rookie, you've got that message in you. Yes. Yep. Get in the game. Get in the game. It's the Holy Spirit will guide you. He'll lead you. 
and he'll do the ministering to their soul. But that is the message that people need to hear. And that is the way people, that is the way the lost are feeling. And I tear up and I choke up for two reasons. One, because I remember how that felt. And two, because I can't stand that other people feel that way. Mm -hmm. Don't get distracted by the things of the world. Take the time to be vigilant, to watch, because there are people out there hurting. Yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've blessed us with. We ask, Lord, that you help us to get in the game, no matter the quote-unquote maturity level that we're at. Help us to represent you well in all humility and love and to be a blessing to those around us. We love you, Father. We thank you for your for your sacrifice, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Just feel like you're ten feet tall and bu- bu- uh, ten feet tall and bulletproof. Bulletproof. Yep. Yep.